Numbers. We all deal with numbers. Name me in an industry that doesn't involve numbers and put it in the comment below. <laughs> That's a total engagement bait. But if you disagree, put it in the comments below and tell me why. Hi, I'm Steve Xiao. In this video, we're going to cover how to work with numerical values in demo. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Did that work? I saw it in the video somewhere. Numbers are important in our business. In fact, numbers are strange and almost magical. In movies, they would tell you how numbers is the language between the aliens and the humans. And it's funny because numbers is the language between the business people and the technical people. And mistakes on either side can have expensive consequences. In Daml, there's several data types that are built in. And we're going to cover a few of them to help you manage your numerical values and cover some of the fundamental operations that you would probably need. Let's take a closer look. All right, let's fire up the terminal and create a new project. Let's call it numbers demo. And we're going to use the template empty skeleton. Let's CD into the folder and run demo studio. Now that fires up VS code. Fantastic. Now there's no demo file, so we're going to create one. Um, by and we're going to save it as main.daml. Let's make sure we save it into the right folder, which is the demo folder. Let's call it main.daml just to make it easy. All right, let's uh, let me just maximize the space here. Here we go. And I'm going to create a um, a template just to do a to do this demo. Uh, don't look to this video as a uh, any guide to writing great demo files or templates. I just want to have something to be able to uh, run this demo. So we're going to call it a computation template. Um, and we're going to set the variables as, um, well, we're going to need a party. So let's call the, let's call the party the mathematician and some value that we want to test. And we're going to try a couple of uh, operations. We're going to add by one. Uh, we're going to subtract by one. Let's multiply by two. And um, let's try a division. And we'll try two. We'll try division by three. And we'll try a division by seven. And it'll be clear why we're doing this in a second. And um, the signatory will be just the mathematician. We're not making this complicated. And so the controller, the mathematician, uh, can trigger a calculation. And we just want to have a, a way to invoke the calculations. And we'll just simply pass in a value to test. And it's going to be an integer, a whole number. And what will we do? Well, uh, in the do block, we are going to create a new um, contract out of this template. And we'll perform a variety of um, computations. Ah, let's add the modulus, the, the reminder, uh, the remainder, I'm, my apologies, the remainder. So uh, let's do add by one, uh, simply plus one. Remember that you cannot use a plus plus as you would in, say, JavaScript or .NET or Java. So we can use plus plus here. Likewise, for subtraction, to simply value minus one. Multiplication is the familiar star operator. There you go. Multiply by two. And division, no surprise there, will be just a forward slash. And we're going to do a division by seven as well. And the mod of five will be the value, the send sign, which is a common use uh, across different languages. So that's good. Now let's write a simple uh, script just to pass in a value to test. 
And the first thing we want to do is to allocate a party. Let's think of a normal name. Uh, let's say Einstein for the mathematician. Fantastic. And uh, we're going to kick off the, the contract uh, by just creating a to initialize a contract with just zeros and then we can call a choice to trigger command so we can see what we're doing so the first round i uh, just copy and pasted a bunch of these input uh create arguments if you will and they're all zeroed out but we're gonna call a uh, a choice we're gonna exercise a choice that will perform a calculation uh choice and we're gonna pass a value i like 12 because it's uh, divisible by a bunch of stuff. Uh, little, let me show you a little trick here. Just drag it and until you see a halfway point on the left. And now you can see the entire stretch. You see that all the, the computations have been made according to our do block. So that's fantastic. There's a few more computations like the power of and um, that we are going to need. Now the power of 2 is going to have to... Uh, need a decimal data type, which is really a numeric 10. Numeric is another data type. You can specify numeric followed by a number for the precision. We're going to need square root as well. Square root will use decimal. Now in the do block, let's uh, add those two lines, power of 2. We're going to take the value and uh, raise it to the power of 2. But we can run into a problem. It will say that it is, doesn't recognize the star star operator. This is because we have not imported the da.math um, uh, library. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, there's still a problem. It tells us that the first number there is expected to be a, a numeric 10. So let's convert it to a decimal, which is a numeric 10. So that should be fine. And for that, we just need to do a 0. Uh, and that should work. Now the square root as well. We can uh, take the, val the square root, which is SQRT, but um, it doesn't like it, so we're going to convert that to a decimal, and that should do it. And down to the script, we are going to add those two lines just to zero them out for our test. Remember to put the point zero because it is not an integer anymore it is a decimal so one thing that i forgot to mention is the division by seven the reason why it's an integer is because we are reporting the quotient of the division uh, so unlike what your calculator would tell you i hope that gave you a great overview of how to handle numerical values in daml when i used to teach kids how to code i love telling them the story of gangnam style in youtube gangnam style Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style was a video that that first surpassed the 2 billionth view mark in YouTube. And when it did, it broke the system and it resets it back to zero. The reason why it hit a ceiling was because YouTube was using a 32-bit integer. Now, 32-bit will be 2 to the power of 32, and if you punch that into the calculator, it should land you around 4 billion. Now, that is true, but YouTube was using a signed 32-bit, which means we start counting at negative 2 billion and we max out at positive 2 billion. 2 billion and change. Now, they've since corrected it to use 64-bit uh, integers. But that was a very important lesson in understanding the data types that you're working with in any framework. We got more content lined up. See you in the next episode. Bye.